Welcome to this Windows channel and today's the first day of build 2015. Build 2015 for those that aren't very techy is the uh, event where Microsoft will talk about pretty much everything that it's doing in every department. You know um, Windows is only one department of Microsoft and there's a lot more to it. You know there's the Xbox division there's uh, also all sorts of cloud services for enterprise and uh, you know what Windows is only third in the money that actually Microsoft makes the two first divisions that Microsoft have is pretty much everything enterprise and uh, cloud services and so on so it means that you know Build is here for a lot of information of pretty much everybody. And today we were expecting some Windows 10 news and you know, things are going on. Uh, there's a lot of news about you know the .NET and stuff. But we didn't have anything Windows until Satya Nadella finally brought the conversation to Windows 10 today. And a lot of people were waiting for that. Including me, I was watching from you know a little bit from afar looking at the different things that they were saying. So first of all, Microsoft announces carrier billing for all Windows 10 devices, uh, even desktop. So that means that if you want to buy, if you want to go to the Microsoft store for something, uh, you don't actually need to have a credit card. They actually um, worked out deals with carriers. So for example, you have a Windows phone and you want to buy an app or buy something through the Microsoft Store, well, instead of asking for a credit card, it can actually be charged on your carrier. So it means that your carrier will be actually putting that charge on your monthly bill, for example. And um, that will work even for desktop. So that's kind of curious. I'm wondering how they're actually going to implement this on a desktop but apparently it works on across all devices so it's kind of interesting um, on that aspect but not surprising because Microsoft slowly wants to integrate more and more the way that we actually buy stuff through the um, Microsoft channel you know buying apps on the Microsoft Store and so on uh, without having to go everywhere and um, even, you know, that slowly prepares for a lot of stuff later on in a few years. Um, and I, I'm sure they're thinking way ahead with this. Something really, really interesting also is that um, you'll be able to run, of course, Windows apps, universal apps on the desktop. So Microsoft actually demoed um, what it's like to run Windows apps on a PC or you know the the universal apps and um, even after the user will actually close an app for example a universal app you'll be able to receive uh, notifications from what's happening so for example you open an app that's doing something you decide that you're closing it but you still want to know what's happening what's gonna what's new, what's the changes, what's what's coming up in this app, you know, the different news items and so on. So for example, if it's a news app, you'll be able to actually shut it down, do something else, but still get little notifications that pop up and say, oh, here's a new news item, here's something new happening. And universal apps will actually have that uh, from desktop to phone to tablets. So uh, that's kind of an interesting thing, you know what? Why not? I think it's cool to have a uh, app that will uh, give us notifications about something without, you know, having to just stand there and look at it on your computer screen. You can at least do something else. So uh, interesting idea here. Something very interesting, um, and I think that this one kind of surprised a lot of people. Android and iOS apps will arrive on Windows 10. Um, I heard rumors a few days ago about somehow Android apps would run on the Windows platform and I was kind of wondering how 
Well, Microsoft clarified the rumor today and announced that uh, developers not only can post uh, port their Android app codes to Windows 10, but even iOS apps. That's interesting. So they, this means that you know it's going to reduce the friction for developers hoping to expand their apps um, offering on Windows 10 without requiring a lot of effort. So you know what? I think this is really a way of Microsoft to increase the number of apps that are actually going to show up on the Microsoft Store. One of the biggest problems in Windows 8, and it's still there, is how little apps there is compared to iPhones and Androids. Well, this is maybe going to fix it because it's going to make it so much easier for anyone that wants to develop an app for Windows 10 to do so and you know because they'll be doing it for iOS or Android and it's going to be easy to uh, share through the Windows 10. So that's interesting. Something really big, Spartan browser, I've already posted a just a, a video, a separate video for this, is introducing Microsoft Edge. Spartan is gone. That's, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm a little sad because I actually liked Spartan. And actually, when I posted my video about Spartan becoming Microsoft Edge, I got a few replies of people saying, I like Spartan. And you know, I w am one of those that actually did like Spartan a lot. And so, um, oh well, you know, we have to say goodbye. It's going to be called Microsoft Edge. I'm not really sure. I, I thought Spartan was better personally. But uh, anyway, Project Spartan is officially no more. So probably in the next build of Windows 10, uh, we'll have, of course, pro the Microsoft Edge browser, uh, which is pretty much part of Spartan. So, uh, but I do miss Spartan. You know, I, th I think everybody's going to miss Spartan. It was kind of a great name for a browser. It was nice, you know. So uh, Microsoft Edge is going to be the new name for the browser. And of course, it will have note-taking, sharing features built in, and um, will have new tab pages with web extension support, and of course, uses the new Edge HTML format that Microsoft uh, has put forward. And uh, so that's pretty much what we know about Windows 10. Um, one last thing maybe about the uh, Windows 10 continuum for phones. Continuum for Windows 10 is that uh, seamless way of going from a desktop computer to a tablet mode. And uh, for now it's a little broken. You know, tablet mode isn't fantastic in Windows 10. And uh, it's kind of weird because in Windows 8 that start screen is actually fantastic for any touch devices. But um, we're, you know, they're trying to kind of do a seamless going from Windows desktop to Windows uh, touch or modern. So uh, that's what's uh, Windows 10 continuum. So, the, uh, so they, they are fully backing its promise to make its service and devices as universal as possible. Uh, Microsoft did announce that Windows 10 phones will be able to go from a continuum to a um, desktop mode. So meaning that your phone, your Windows phone, can be used almost as a desktop and used for work, basically. So, um, you know, maybe not for small phones, but, you know, like the phablets, these uh, tablets and phones that are pretty big. That could be interesting, though meaning that these devices can actually become full workable PCs and you can actually do some real cool work on that. So uh, that's pretty much the news of day one of the build conference and um, really really nice to know what's happening. Of course as more Windows 10 and more Windows details come up we'll be talking about it. Still nothing about release dates of Windows 10 um, not a lot of details for now for that. 
If you enjoy our videos, why not subscribe to our channel? You'll be informed when new videos are online. If you have any comments or questions, maybe you have a feature of Windows 10 you'd like us to talk about, or Windows in general, let us know and we'll post that video. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.